everybody, so I want to go through a step-by-step -step how to do your first print on something like this. And to be honest, it is super easy. Now, I'm always looking for something that I think would be useful. So, you know, things like generators and wind turbines and that sort of stuff. But what's useful to me isn't necessarily useful to anybody else. And so I was looking around to see what other things had been done. And to be honest, I was astounded. I came across quite a few people who are taking things off Thingiverse or creating their own things and printing them and selling them, in particular chess sets. There were a couple of really nice chess sets that I'd seen. Now, they're not selling one or two. One chap had sold 13,000, let me say that again, 13,000 chess sets that he 3D printed at £71 per set. The guy's made himself a millionaire. That's a huge amount of money from something like this. And I thought, well, you know, people are always looking for stuff to do, a way to earn extra money, a way to run a business. And what this chap did, I mean, you know, you've got to take your hat off to him and admire him. I mean, that's a guy we get up and go. I mean, he's seen an opportunity, he's gone for it, he's worked out, and he's made himself some money. Good man. But also a really good example of what you can do, this thing. It's not only a tool on a desk, it's an entire industry you can do for yourself, which is really impressive. So I was thinking, okay, that could be useful, and useful in a different way to the way I think about it. You could make your own business from this. Now, yeah, okay, this Max, which is obviously going to allow you to do an awful lot, um, was a reasonably expensive machine. But... Remember, they start at about £100 or so, with the Pro 3D being about £150-ish, can't remember, something like that. So they're not really expensive to get going. When you buy your filament, of course, you're only buying filament when you produce something, so it's a revenue cost, the machine is a capital cost. You are using electricity, so I looked into what that was, <laughs> it turns out... A 10-hour print is going to cost you something like 18 pence in electricity. So you're not paying an absolute fortune for these things. Now, I don't doubt that the guy who is doing that many chess sets is um, paying a royalties, a gratuity, a tip, a thank you to the people who designed the stuff that he's been using. But he just takes it from Thingiverse, prints it out and sells it on eBay. And I thought, well, I mean, who couldn't do that? You can do that kind of thing with... Um, really minimum experience, minimum expenditure, and if you put the effort in, make quite a considerable return from something like that. Because the amount of money you have to spend to set this up is perhaps uh, the least I can think of, and you suddenly get yourself a manufacturing business that you could take somewhere. I was just so impressed with that, it changed it from, you know, a, a hobby where you're making a few quid at the weekend to something where you could make a pretty decent living. And what would be useful? Well, of course, I'm a big Whovian, I love Doctor Who, so I thought I would do a Doctor Who chess set. Why not? A uh, Doctor Who chess set's nothing more than going around collecting Doctor Who figures and shrinking them to the right height. So what we're going to do is exactly that, in a step-by-step, -step to show you exactly how easy it is. OK, just put Thingiverse in the search, it'll take you straight there. And I want a Doctor Who chess set, so let's just type in Doctor Who chess set there. And hit search, sure enough, we'll get a whole load of Doctor Who chess sets. This one looks super awesome, and it's also a one I've seen for sale on the internet. You click on it, and it takes you straight to that page. You get a pretty picture of what it actually looks like. And then the bit that you're interested in, Thing Files. Click on that, and you will see all of the files that you can download. What you need to do with those, obviously, is download. Let's download all. Here we get an option to show some love, and it also gives us uh, an idea of what this license is, and it's a Creative Commons Attribution license. Once we've downloaded it, we can go straight to the download folder. and pick up our file. When that file is ready, then we can upload that into Cura. So when you're happy with everything, we've got to send the print going. So all I've done is put 8K9s on a couple of pieces, and that's my Doctor Who chess set. There were a couple of bits I didn't like in that other chess set, so I've swapped them out, why not? 
Now when we look at that, you click up here and you'll see all the print settings that you can uh, actually change. And we've got layer heights, qualities, and it gives you a hint about what that means. In fact, they all give hints about what that means. The main thing to be looking at is the infill, the speed, support, and building plate adhesion. So if we look at the material, and I'm using PLA, so I've set it at 220 for the printing temperature and 60 for the bed plate. You just get that off the web or whatever guidance you've got. These are chess pieces, so the infill is the uh, bit in between. It actually only prints the outer three layers. The rest of it, if it would print it solid, would cost an awful lot in plastic and be completely unnecessary. So it prints like a grid pattern, an open sort of honeycomb, and this tells you the density. For something like a chess piece, the density doesn't need to be much, so 15% infill will speed up the print, reduce the plastic, and it matches what it is you want it to do. So if it's not bearing any strength, you don't need much. The material we've already covered. If we go down here to building plate adhesion, when it prints, it has to stick to the building plate. And if the bottom isn't enough to stick, then it'll peel off. So you can change that. Now, for something like these, I've put none because I don't think anything is actually needed. But we can put a skirt or a brim or put it on a little raft, that sort of thing. But none's just fine. Now, when we're looking at print speed, this will affect the quality. If we do a very high print speed, then it'll be quite a rough quality, and a low print speed is pretty reasonable. You only set at 60, I've set this at 40, it was a little bit slower. It will, of course, increase my print time. There's got a recommended settings there for you as well. Now, when we've done all of that, which is not a great deal, actually, it's mostly just playing about, uh, or uh, mostly just playing on the computer, click Slice, and it will process it. Now, it gives you an idea here of the amount of time it's going to take, how much material, in this case 37 grams, 6 hours 30 minutes. We can preview it or we can save it as a file if it's your um, printer's connected to computer. It'll actually come up, go directly, and here we can just save it. And we save it as a G-code file with that file name. And that's the file that we put on the disk and take to the printer. Put that file onto this micro SD and that goes into the little slot at the front there. Now when you first turn this on, um, your screen will display four icons. You will press uh, prepare and then extruder, feed your filament through the filament sensor into the top of here and press load and it will load that filament. That's it. Once that filament is loaded, all we have to do is go back and print and we can see here we've got our Cybermen, confirm it and it will start printing and six hours from now we'll have a Doctor Who chess set. There it is! My Doctor Who chess set! I made a number of changes, so the white pawns are little canines, the black pawns are little darlings. They're <laughs> so cute, it's unbelievable. I've made the Knights and the Black set Cybermen, the uh, Weeping Angels are the Bishops, the Master is the King of the Black Set, Missy is the Queen of the Black Set. And on the White Set, then obviously the King is the Doctor. I've made the Bishops the Sonic Screwdrivers, I've made the Knights uh, Sontarans, because remember there was a good Sontaran. And <laughs> um, K9 is the Queen, this K9 figure. So that's it printed. Now it took about six hours to print. And people say, oh, that takes ages. But you've got to remember it's contact time, because unless you're sitting there with your thumb up your backside, sipping on a cup of tea for six hours, that six hours is wasted. But you don't do that. Well, perhaps you do, I don't know. But you don't do that. You set it printing, and then for six hours you're doing something else. So the actual contact time for this is minutes, really. I mean, half an hour. The rest of the time you're off doing other things, you come back and it's all printed and finished. So people say, oh hey, it takes ages to do it. Well, yes it does, if you sit there watching it, but who in the right mind would do that? So there is my finished chess set. <laughs> it's an absolutely ridiculous thing, I love it. These little dinky K9s are just so cute. Not sure what I'm going to do with this, I mean, you know, um, I might sell it on the store, I suppose. I might just keep it because it's such a beautiful thing. Or I'm thinking about just doing a giveaway with it. Maybe a competition, maybe just give it away. But we'll have to have a think about that one. 
So this I've seen for sale for £71. It cost me about £3, including electricity to make, and it's sellable at £71. <laughs> this is obviously a, a specialist item, uh, but I have seen uh, 12,000 of these being sold. So that, that's a lot of sales of Doctor Who chess sets. And that's what I mean, these 3D printers, hey? Um, as I say, I was very sceptical about them, but after using them for, what, three, four months, I think I've changed my opinion. They are now, in my mind, a, a workshop on your desk. Uh, I mean, the filament ones don't smell at all. As you've heard, the Elegoo ones are incredibly quiet, and you can make just about anything out of them, really, and, and even making product that you can sell is available to you. So it's not only a workshop. It's also a, like a business in a box. The box arrives, you take the thing out, and you're up and running. Anyway, I thought I would share that with you, particularly the idea that it could be used to make your own uh, business, your own life, if you like, which is just truly astounding thing about them. But I obviously need a chessboard now. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope it inspires you. And please do remember to like and subscribe.